Ladies and gentlemen, happy Sabbath. On Wednesday next week, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta is expected in Sagana for Sagana 3 meeting. That meeting is significant politically speaking in this country because President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected, number one, to issue political direction for his people. Number two, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta is likely to endorse Raila Odinga's bid for the presidency publicly for the first time. And one man who understands the power of Sagana meeting is none other than the Deputy President, Dr. William Samuel Pluto. If you've been following the politics of this country very closely, last year in January, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta chaired another Sagana meeting, Sagana 2 meeting. And after chairing that meeting, the county assemblies, all county assemblies in the entire Mount Kenya region, voted yes to the Building Bridges Initiative Bill. Before that meeting, it was expected that the county assemblies were going to reject that bill without even thinking twice. So Sagana meeting is really very important when it comes to the larger Mount Kenya politics. And you also know that for the deputy president to become the next president of the Republic of Kenya, he must ensure that the support is being enjoying in the larger Mount Kenya region at 85% is maintained at that point. And the deputy president, as we speak, is currently facing two major headaches in the larger Mount Kenya region. The first headache he's facing is what is called voter turnout. It is projected that majority of people from the larger Mount Kenya region, a huge number, not majority, will decide not to vote. Because they won't see the need of voting for Ruto and voting for Raila. So that voter turnout is something which is worrying the DP. The second thing is the undecided. The number of undecided in the larger Mount Kenya region has really increased in this country. And William Ruto has been working so hard to thwart any attempt by the president to hold the Sagana 3 meeting. So in this video today, I want to give you the five strategies, I might exceed five by the way, which the deputy president has been using to try and thwart any plans by the president to hold the Sagana 3 meeting. And by the way, if you are watching the channel for the first time, please just click the subscribe button. To the subscribers, I want to thank you guys for the support. Let me be very brief. If there's one thing which the deputy president would not want to happen, is the Sagana 3 meeting. Because number one, UDA party is not sure on the reaction of the people of the larger Mount Kenya region to President Rukinyata. And it's a double-edged sword. If the president is going to go to that event, for example, and endorse Raila Molodinga, will the residents heed to President Ruru Kenyatta's advice or will they continue the way they have been? So if they heed to President Ruru Kenyatta's advice, then it means they'll support Raila Odinga, which is going to be very bad for him. Number two, Mount Kenya as a region would want to have their leader and currently their leader is President Ruru Kenyatta. Is President Ruru Kenyatta going to continue being their political leader? If they are going to agree in Sagana that President Ruru Kenyatta is going to continue as their leader, then it means the president will now take charge of that particular region. So the deputy president came up with the strategies which has been employed, employing. The first strategy which the DP is currently employing is to engineer mass exodus from Jubilee Party to UDA Party. The idea behind this mass exodus is simple. The deputy president, number one, he wants to scare away President Ruru Kenyatta from going ahead with their activating Jubilee. Yesterday you saw Jubilee was being activated in Kieni, in Mathioya, in different parts of that region. So the deputy president is engineering this mass ex exodus. Like in year yesterday, there were allegations that 25, or was it 30 MCS out of 40? defected from Jubilee to UDN. The truth of the matter is that majority of those members of uh, county assemblies 
had actually defected to Tanga Tanga a long time ago. But politics is a game of perception. It was the first time they were defecting, now officially from Jubilee to UDA, because UDA was formed the other day. These guys have been with Ruto for like four years. So the DP has been also receiving several other defectors, if you've been keen. And most of these defectors are actually people from the larger Mount Kenya region, people like Jaguar, the Molo member of parliament who had, who had uh, defected, being received. I mean, the, the Gilgil member of parliament, again, being received. So he's been engineering this mass exodus just to scare away the president so that the president can figure out that, oh, I'm losing something. So that's the first strategy he's been using. The second strategy is that the deputy president has now camped. The whole of this week has been in the larger Mount Kenya region. The idea behind that was to show the president that indeed he has support. I don't know whether he, he succeeded in that. Maybe you could tell me. Because in my own understanding and estimation, I think the trip to west to Mount, Mount Kenya region by the deputy president failed. Yesterday, you saw what happened to Kimani Shungwa. He was heckled when he tried to attack a local member of parliament in Kiambu. That is something which was unheard of. There is this photo of Ruto and Mudavadi and their convoy addressing very few people there. In Kirinyaga, you saw the kind of crowd they were attracting. Not the kind of excited crowd he used to attract before. So the DP went to the larger Mount Kenya region to try and consolidate that region so that the president can be scared not to go ahead with this meeting. The third strategy the DP is using is actually to re try and revive Raila Odinga phobia. I listened very closely to the deputy president's speech in uh, Kirinyaga and also his speech yesterday in uh, Kiambu. The DP is trying so hard to revive Raila Odinga phobia. But it's not clicking as at now. I don't know whether he's going to succeed in reviving Raila Odinga phobia. The truth of the matter is that in the last 15 years, the people of the larger Mount Kenya region have been made to believe that Raila Odinga is a very bad man. In the last election, President Ruth Kenyatta hired Cambridge Analytica and paid them hundreds of millions just to paint Raila Odinga as a bad man. So Raila Odinga was painted so bad in the eyes of the larger Mount Kenya region to an extent that there are so many people who never believed that Raila Odinga was a human being. So when Raila Odinga started going to the larger Mount Kenya region, engaging the people, a lot of things started changing. When the president started telling people that I'm going to support Raila Odinga, when people like uh, David Murade started telling people that it's us, people like uh, the governor of Omeru, Kiretu Murungi, that it's us who painted this guy black. People like uh, the governor for Nyandarwa, Kimema, that it's them who painted this guy black. It's not that black. So many people started embracing Raila Odinga. But for the deputy president to succeed, Raila Odinga must be painted bad. So in his speech, the deputy president has maintained yule jamuwa kitandawili. Mimi na uru tulifanya hivi. Ujamuwa kuwa. Jamuwa kitandawili. Sisi tumejenga reli. Ule jamuwa kitandawili anaweza. Sisi siju tulifanya nini. Jamuwa kitandawili hata kipewa nini. Oh nini nini. So he's trying to create that phobia. Let us wait and see whether that phobia is going to succeed. The fourth thing he's doing is to try and revisit the betrayal. The truth of the matter is that President Ruth Kenyatta and William Ruto worked together in 2013 and again in 2017. It was expected that the president was going to fully support his deputy in 2022. But that's not going to happen. The president and the deputy have fallen out. Reasons why they fell out, we still don't know. Maybe the president will tell us during the Sagana 3 meeting. But the deputy president is reminding the people of the mountain that it's him who campaigned for President Rukinyata. That Raila Moludinga, the president now wants to become the president, was nowhere. And it's only appealing to these people that you guys need to pay me back that support. There are people who are buying that. 
there are people who are not buying that. So that's another strategy he's using. The fifth strategy, which the deputy president is using, but I think it's also backfiring, is what happened to Kimani Shongwa in uh, Lari. The deputy president is now decampaigning those he perceives to be President Uhuru Kenyatta's allies, those he perceives to be still supportive of the president. So they've identified members of parliament from the larger Mount Kenya region. And the DP is going to their constituencies to decampaign them. He's been doing that to Kanini Kega. In Lari, they tried that. I don't think it succeeded. In Kiambu, he's been decampaigning the governor. The deputy president has people checkmating those who are not supportive of him and those who are supportive of President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. Whether that's going to succeed, time will tell. But the idea behind the campaigning these people is simple. If you are supporting the deputy president, I mean, if you are supporting President Uhuru Kenyatta from the larger Mount Kenya region, and the deputy president is the most popular guy, perceptionally, then he comes to your constituency and he campaigns you. If you're weak, you'll be scared. And that's exactly what he's doing. And the sixth thing he's doing is that he's also targeting the forces behind President Uhuru Kenyatta's success. You know, Uhuru Kenyatta and his success in Jubilee, in attempt to revive Jubilee, can be attributed to young guys and young ladies. Some of them are not members of parliament. For example, there's Pauline Joroge, there's Wahomi Tuku, there is Aijin Gugi, the guy who was nominated to the Senate the other day. Now, these are the people they are targeting. You saw the kind of attacks which have always been directed towards Pauline Joroge. Why? Just because Pauline Joroge organized a meeting of 3,000 youths at, at State House. It is expected that she's also going to play a, a huge role in organizing the, the Sagana 3 meeting. So they are being targeted. They are being intimidated so that they don't go ahead with the speed they were going with. And lastly, it's propaganda. <laughs> the deputy president team is now employing propaganda. One of the propaganda is that President Rukinyata is not going to attend the Sagana 3 meeting. You see, the truth of the matter is that President Rukinyata is out of the country. And the organizers of the event toward the region, the, the venue of the event, and one of the things they stated was that President Lukanyat is not in the country. They've set up everything. The only thing they are waiting for, the only thing they're waiting for is for the president to return back into the country so that they can fix a date with the president. And I'm aware that one of the things they're planning to do is that after Sagana meeting, they want the president to, to use road to attend the funeral of this, this former MP who died, I think it comes from Kirinyaga, one of the constituencies, Ngao. I think it's called Ngao. So they want the president to use road to go to that funeral. So those are some of the things they were still farming up. But the propaganda which it too is churning out is that the president has been told that, oh, this meeting can, should not take place, you what, what. And that that propaganda is not ending there. They're also coming up with the, uh, with the story of Mohoho Kenyatta, who is Uru Kenyatta's younger brother, being proposed as the running mate. The idea behind all those propaganda is simple. To divert the attention from the main issue to those particular small issues. So that Kenyans will start thinking, okay, why is Uru Kenyatta organizing... Um, Sagana 3 meeting. Is it because he wants the brother to be the successor? Or why is he doing that? I don't know what you think, but those are the strategies which he's using. And I'm not sure whether those strategies are going to succeed. Probably you should let me know whether you think by engineering def mass defection, by campaigning in the larger Mount Kenya region, by trying to revive the betrayal tag, by decampaigning President Uru Kenyatta's allies, by the targeting forces behind Uru Kenyatta's success like Pauline Joroge, by coming up with propaganda, Team Tanga Tanga will succeed in persuading Uru Kenyatta not to go to Sagana. Let me hear your thoughts on that. And by the way, 
What three things do you think will come out of Sadana? Will Red Odinga be endorsed? What else? I want to read your comments. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye bye.